This video is going to talk about functions and function notation. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. It could be any kind of ordered pairs. It could be x and y's. It could be first names and last names. Anything that you can make an ordered pair out of. Function is every input has only one output. It's a relation because they're ordered pairs, but every input can only have one output. So if we look at this first example, these are students and over here we have their degree that they're going for in college. So Elizabeth is going for education, Andrew is going for engineering, Dave is going for biology, Angie is going for business, and Mark is going for music. Now each one of those is only going for one degree, so that makes it a function. When we come over here to this other example, this is the birthday month and this is the birthday day. In my family, the one of us has a birthday on April 28, one of us has a birthday on May 10, one of us has a birthday on December 3rd, another one of us has a birthday on April 8, and one of us has a birthday on May 4. Now you can see that when you look at April, it went to two different outputs. And when you look at May, the same thing happened. We have two birthdays in May. So this one is not a function because those inputs of April and May had more than one output that was related to it. Now if you're looking at a graph, one way that you can tell whether you have a function or not is to do the vertical line test. The vertical line test says that if I move this vertical line anywhere across my graph and it crosses my graph more than once, then it's not a function because if you see this vertical line right here, this point right here and this point right here are on that vertical line. So there, the input here looks like it's 3, but it has two different outputs. It has an output of 3 and it has an output of negative 3. So it's not a function. If we take this vertical line and move it over here to this graph, and I move it all the way across my graph, so far everywhere I've moved it, it only has one place where my blue line is crossing my vertical line here. So this one is a function. So again, this one is not a function, and the other example was a function because it passed the vertical line test. So function notation is often used when we're talking about functions. So f of x is the same thing as y. They are interchangeable. We've been looking at equations that are y equal mx plus b, and those are linear functions in reality. So we could say that f of x is equal to m x plus b. Just a different way of writing the same thing. f is the name of the function and then inside the parentheses indicates the input. If it's a variable then we know what our variable on the other side of the equal sign is going to be. Over here it's x. Or it might have a value in there and then it tells you what to input for x. So let's suppose that we have y equal 2x minus 3. Well we can also write that f of x is equal to 2x minus 3. So if we want to evaluate that f function when x is equal to negative 1, it would look like f of negative 1 is equal to, and then wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it with negative 1. So f of negative 1 is equal to 2 times x, which is now negative 1, minus 3. So it says, what do you notice about the number in the parentheses and the x value? They are interchangeable. Okay, Every x becomes the number inside the parentheses. And what is f of negative 1 equivalent to? Well, again, that's going to be 2 times negative 1 minus 3. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 3, so it would be negative 5. So let's try it. Here we have a function x squared plus 2. It's the g function, and we want to know when g of 0, what it's equal to. So we would come in here and we have an x to begin with, so we would put 0, and that's squared plus 2. And 0 squared is just 0 plus 2 will give us 2. Now we're going to put in our negative 2, because that's our x now. And we have to square it, because that's what the function told us to do to x, and then add 2. Well that's going to give us negative 2 times negative 2 would be 4 plus 2. And that's then going to be equal to 6. Try again. g of negative 1. Well, it's negative 1, 
and we're going to square that and then we're going to add our 2. Well, if we do that, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 plus that 2 and we can see that g of negative 1 is equal to 3. One more g of 10, so we have our 10 is our x, we're replacing this x up here with 10 and then it tells us that we have to square that so we will square it and then add 2. Well 10 times 10 is 100 plus our 2 so g of 10 is equal to 102. This line is the f of x line. It's the equation that graphed it was the f of x function. And we want to find f of 1. Well, we're going to use a graph to do that. Remember that in here is our x value. It used to be an x, but these are interchangeable. So the 1 is the x value. So I come over here to the 1 on my graph, and I go until I can hit my graph, and I find out that this is the point right here. I already know that x is 1, so what's the y value that is across from my point, and it's equal to 2. Now it wants me to do f of negative 2. Again, this is my x, so I come over to negative 2 in the x, and then I go up to hit my graph and find out where I hit it. If I look across over here, I'm hitting it at y equal 5, so f of negative 2 is equal to 5. We can also use function notation to talk about a table. This is the h function. And we could say here y is equal to h of x if we really wanted to. And it's asking me to find h of negative 2. Well, this is my x. So I go to 2, negative 2 is my x, and I find out that it's equal to 9.8. Now you can have function notation that says, let's say, what is when is h of x equal to negative 1? Well, I have an x in here, so what I really need to remind myself is that h of x, function notation is the same thing as saying y is equal to negative 1. So I come over here and I can see that when y is negative 1, my answer is h of x is equal to negative 1 when x is equal to positive 1. So let's use this and see if we can write a function and then use our function with our problem. So Lois has a new job with a math instructor at a local community college. Her starting salary is $41,500 with a regular teaching load of 30 credit hours. If she teaches beyond the regular load, she earns $950 per credit hour. So it wants us to write the linear function f of x for her yearly income where x is the number of extra credit hours she teaches. So she earns $41,500. That's the given. But if she works over that, she's going to add to that $950 for every hour she, credit hour she works extra. So it would be 950 times the number of hours that she works over. B then says, if Lois teaches two additional four credit hour courses, what is her income? Well, two four credit hours is going to be how many hours? It's an X, and that means that she's going to have eight credit hours. So it's an x, so it's really asking us for f of 8. And how do we do that? Remind yourself, it's 41,500 plus 950. But now, instead of writing x, we write the 8 that was in parentheses. Well, this then gives us 41,500. And 950 times 8 would be 7,600. And if we want to solve that then, we would say that we had $49,100 income. So f of 6 then is the next problem that they're going to ask us. So f of 6 just means, again, that this is x equal 6 credit hours. So plugging and chugging f of 6 is equal to that 41,500 
plus the 950 times our 6. Well, working along, this is 41,500. And 950 times 6 is 5,700. And if we add those all together, we get... 47.2. We get $47,200 in income. For working six, six extra credit hours.